to be a living sacrifice. Step number 10. Step number 10, to be a living sacrifice. Last time we, last Sunday we spoke about, among other things, we mentioned that God wants us to be faithful ambassadors and since the Bible says we are ambassadors of Christ, then we must strive towards being faithful Christians. The most important thing about the Christian message is not that it exists at a church level. It must come to a personal level in your heart. That is when the church will be effective. When everybody on a personal basis applies the message to his life and uh, chooses to be fruitful, to be effective as a disciple of Christ. That's when the church will be effective and God will be largely and greatly glorified in all the churches of God across the world. As long as the message is kept at, an, at, a, at a church level. Our church, uh, I attend a gospel preaching church. I attend a full gospel church. A lot of believers take pride in the kind of church they attend. Almost boasting that my church preaches sound doctrine. But then on a personal level, the sound doctrine does not permeate into the lives of the people. And that's uh, something we need to address in every congregation, in every assembly. We need to address that and make sure the message permeates our lives. That I personally, I, I am functioning as an ambassador of Christ and as a faithful ambassador. Amen. Must make sure we are functioning as Christ ambassadors and faithful ones for that matter. And uh, we spoke also about being a faithful messenger. He's still virtually saying the same thing. We must be faithful messengers. Every Christian must see himself as a messenger of Christ. I don't know how you see yourself. Well, unless you see yourself as a messenger of Christ, you will never live the kind of life God wants you to live. You see yourself a messenger of Christ in everything you are doing, your place of work, in your career, the city in which you are living, in every area of your life. And uh, so that we can be a faithful city. I will start in Isaiah 126. When every one of us become faithful, then we will make up a faithful city. And that city is Zion. The city of the living God. And we should remember to be faithful in all things. First Timothy 3.11. I think that was the last scripture we read. I don't know if it was. but If it's not the last, then close to being the last. Where? Might not even be close to being the last, but we read it. I believe we read that. We be faithful in all things. It's very important. In your marriage, be faithful. In your job, be faithful. As an accountant, be faithful. As a doctor, be faithful. As a teacher, be faithful. As a husband, be faithful. As a child under parents, be faithful. Be faithful in all things. As a government worker, be faithful. Amen. Be faithful in all things. Be faithful in all things. And God needs faithful men. God wants to depend on faithful men. Without faithful men, the gospel will not go on the way it should. Men must be faithful. The true gospel is dying because there, are, there is a shortage of faithful men. The second, just, just remind you, Second Timothy 2, verse 2, we, we said uh, God needs faithful men. The gospel will be committed to faithful men. 
Paul said to Timothy that what he has taught him and the church must be committed to faithful men who can teach others. The shortage of faithful men is making the true gospel to die gradually in many places. And there is a great shortage of the true gospel of God across the world. Because a lot of men are unfaithful in the preaching of the gospel. There must be, we know that there will always be false prophets because the Bible has prophesied that. But then, faithful men must continue to exist. Every assembly needs faithful men to have another generation that will continue her message. Every assembly, this church needs faithful men who will go on with the message to other parishes. And when they get there, they will say exactly what we are saying here. Faithful men. Faithful men are needed for the work of God to spread and spread correctly and spread across the whole earth. Faithful men will not compromise. Faithful men will not look at money. Their priority will not be money. We need to know the characteristics of faithful men. They will not look at money. They will not compromise the truth. They will not, because of the rich, preach what the rich want to hear. Faithful men will work only for Christ and not for money, not for people. Faithful men will prefer to preach under a tree than to compromise the truth in order to build a cathedral. Are you hearing me? Faithful men will prefer to preach to their congregation under a tree or in a bamboo house than to compromise the truth in order to get big money from big men to be the cathedral. And we have to, the whole church across the world has to be careful about that. We are going to look at examples of faithful men. We are about to start that uh, before we closed. We are going to begin that today. Examples of faithful men. There are a lot of faithful men. Both in the Old Testament and New Testament. Now, they are rare in every generation. But across many generations, we can find a lot in the Bible. In every generation, faithful men are rare. But by the time we, we have the Bible message spans across many generations. Amen? Uh, among all those many generations, we're able to see several or many faithful men who were faithful in their generations. Uh, Abraham was faithful in his time. Just to mention a few, Noah was faithful in his time before Abraham. Enoch was faithful. Enoch before Noah. Noah after Enoch. Abraham after Noah. The patriarchs were deemed to be faithful. Isaac, Jacob. And that's why God has named himself after them. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. David had blunders. But then he had a large degree of faithfulness. Though he committed sin, but he repented from his sin. David did not die in his sin. The prophets, all the many of the great prophets of God, I call all of them great. Some of them were not popular, but then they were great because they were prophets. There were even some prophets whose names are not mentioned. There are some great prophets. The Bible does not mention their name. Hallelujah. I would just say a prophet came. They mention all the names. When Jeroboam built an altar unto idols, at the time Israel divided, at the time Israel divided into two, and part was given to Jeroboam, part was left for the son of Solomon, Rehoboam. You remember the story? I hope you do. 
there was this problem that uh, uh, Jeroboam had. Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was king over Israel. He became king over Israel. Not all of Israel. But that's speaking of the northern kingdom. He became king over Israel because the twelve tribes did not any longer agree to stay with Rehoboam, who took over from his father Solomon. And uh, he thought if they were going back to Jerusalem to worship, they might take the kingdom back to David's house. And then he erected idols, idolaters, erected idolaters uh, altars, and told them to worship at that altar. And the Bible told us a prophet came. The prophet of the Lord came from Judah and prophesied to the altars that they shall be destroyed and stretched his hand to the altars. And the king Jeroboam was there and he said, Arrest him. The hand he stretched out was stiffened, was dried up. The Bible never mentioned the name of that prophet. That's why I said every prophet is great. Some of them were not popular. That was all we had about that particular prophet. We never had about him again. Every prophet is great in his own right because he's a prophet. All servants of God are valuable to God. And God calls people for different reasons. Servants are called and given assignments for different reasons. And God values every one of his servants. We human beings like to classify servants for God. I would say one is a great servant, one is not great. But then you may be wrong. In many cases we are wrong. Only God knows his great servants. John the Baptist was said to be the greatest man that ever lived. Amen. But nobody would have said that if we were to write the appraisal of the prophets. If we, as Bible scholars today, were to write the appraisal of the prophets, but we are not qualified to write it. But if we go by what we see in the Bible, and say, who was the great prophet? Nobody will mention John the Baptist. Or what do you think? Nobody will remember him. But God said he was the greatest man that ever lived. Assignment that God has for each person. That's why it would be a mistake for one servant of God to think because I'm not like that one. I'm not really valuable to God. That would be a great mistake. It would have been a great mistake for John the Baptist to have thought because I was not like Elijah. I don't think I'm performing. Are you understanding? You don't understand. Hallelujah. All the prophets were faithful. The fact that they were called as prophets shows they were faithful. And that's why I said there, are, there is a great company of faithful people. Though we have said they are rare in every generation. But then putting the generations together, we are able to see a great company of faithful people. That's the company mentioned in the book of Hebrews. When he's talking about a cloud of witnesses, you remember. I hope you do. Where Hebrew is talking about we are washed over from heaven by a cloud of witnesses. A cloud. I mean, there are so many. They form a cloud. God has many faithful people across all the generations that have lived on the earth. Though in every generation, the faithful are always few. Are you following what I'm saying? So you can be among them. Amen. So why I'm saying there are many is don't think is out of reach. Amen. Don't think what is out of reach. Don't think oh faithful. That's not for me. You can be among them. And you should be. Amen. It's very important for you to be among them. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we 
also accompass about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A cloud of witnesses, so many, so many that they form a cloud. There are so many. Hallelujah. And you have to make up your mind to be among them. Amen. Make up your mind to be among them. Make up your mind not to be unfaithful. First King 13. First Kings 13. The book of the Kings, the first one, the thirteenth chapter of the book. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah, by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. That was an altar that was not authorized. Altar that was made to idols. That was not made built for to serve or worship Jehovah. Idolatrous altar. And he cried against the altar. Who cried against the altar? Pardon? No, 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 not Jeroboam. The man of God from Judah cried against the altar. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord. And said, O altar, altar, thus said the Lord. Behold, a child shall be born. A child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass, when the king Jeroboam had the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar better, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And the hand which he put forth against him dried up, so that he could not pull it again to him. The altar was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and became as it was before. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me, and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, if thou will give me half of thy house, I will not go with thee. I will not go in with thee. And I will eat bread or drink water in this place. Hallelujah. Nobody knew the name of that prophet. What's his name? He was great in his own right. Wasn't he? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Though he fell victim of an older prophet because of compromise. But then he carried his assignment out well. The king said, I'll give you a reward. He said, no. I don't want a reward. I don't want a reward. Don't give me a reward. He said, even if you give me half of your house, what can be more than that? He was a faithful prophet. Very faithful. Though he was deceived. That's a different matter. Deception. But he was very faithful. Because if he had been interested in reward, he would have followed the king. Who should be followed? Is the king or an older prophet who is not rich? I mean, how much money would an older prophet have? Are you following? If he was after reward, he would have followed the king, not the prophet. 
But the older prophet later went to him and said, The Lord said. This is why you should be careful about the Lord said. It's not everybody who says the Lord said. We should be obeyed. The older prophet came and they told him. A young prophet came and prophesied this. He said, where did he go? He said, he had gone there. Then he sat his ass and he ran after him. And he caught up with him where he was resting. Because in those days there were no vehicles. But he had an advantage because he had an ass. He caught up with him. And said, the Lord said, you should come back. And he said, don't say I should not wait. Or he said, the Lord sent an agent. Now I say I should come and tell you. You don't believe everybody who says the Lord said. They may be lying. They may be deceived. Two things. They may not be lying. They may be deceived. Somebody might think the Lord has said. And then tell you the Lord said. Without intending to deceive you. But perhaps he didn't hear from the Lord. He heard from another source. It's not every the Lord said you should believe. That's what the Bible says. We should judge prophecies. Even prophecies that come in the church, the Bible says they should be judged. Because God knows there is possibility of human error. He said we should judge the prophecies and the elders should judge them and declare whether they are to be accepted or not. Hallelujah. Well, I want to point out that the man was faithful. He did a great thing. Didn't it? That was a great sign, was it not? But we don't know his name. For you to know, God loved that prophet. He died. Was killed by a lion. But the lion did not devour him. The lion killed him. Truly. Because he should not have obeyed an older prophet at the expense of what God has said. This is what I'm saying. Ministers today, be careful about your so-called father in the Lord. A lot of pastors, this, this person is my father in the Lord. They look for big, big ministers to be their father in the Lord. Ministers who perhaps are already going astray. They are your father in the Lord. And your ministry will follow their pattern. You two will go astray. The Lord help us in Nigeria. Nigeria, we have a lot of babas. Abi? Baba so and so. Baba so and so. Baba, you don't know where it's going to end up. Whether in hell. All of you are blindly following men instead of following the scriptures. Old prophets can lead you astray. And you go to hell. Hallelujah. But the man was faithful, though he was deceived. The lion killed him by judgment of the Lord. But the lion became a bodyguard for his body. He didn't allow anything to move near. The lion just stood there. Until people came to carry him to bury him. The moment he saw the people coming to carry him, he left. That was his assignment. That makes me remember the story of a young Christian girl somewhere in East Africa that was kidnapped by kidnappers. Story of our time. And kidnappers took the young girl to the bush. Apparently they would have killed her there. They must have been ritual killers. And suddenly a lion appeared. They all ran away. Who will say lion and not run? A lion came from nowhere and they all disappeared. They ran for their lives. And the lion stood by the girl. That was what the lion did. They left sometime. They tried to go back. The lion sat down with the girl there. Story of our time. The lion sat down. While they were coming, the lion is still there. They ran. The lion did not leave until security men came. The moment he saw the security men coming, the lion walked up. 
and they picked the girl and took her back to the city. Story of our time. Give God a big shout. This God is alive. He, that shout is too low. He can do anything. Anything. Where did you ever hear that kind of testimony? Have you heard it before? He can do a new thing. A new thing. This God is wonderful. And is awesome. Too much. I read this account on the internet. You can go and Google it. You will find it. You will find it. I am not telling you cock and boo story. True life story. You will find a Christian girl. But the kidnappers thought they had finished. Abby, where is your Jesus now? Ah, Jesus appeared there. Lion of the tribe. Give him a big shout. Hallelujah. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. The lion appeared. They disappeared. And the lion just sat with the girl in the wilderness. That was all. They didn't touch her. Just sat down. They attempted, they looked at it. The lion is there for, I think it was about three days, if I remember well. But not one day. I will check it again, I will come back to you. If I don't come back to you, somebody remind me. I get the exact number of days. Just sat down there. Maybe two days or three days, I can't remember. Until security men came. And the moment he saw them in uniform, they were coming. Well, this was something God was doing. So he recognized them. And he knew it. God must have told him, now go. He left. But if he was there, they wouldn't be able to pick the girl. He walked off. And they picked the girl. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is wonderful. Now I tell you, there is nothing God cannot do. Nothing. All he needs is trust. The mother of that girl must have been saying, Lord, no, somewhere. Are you understanding? That God, I'm serving you, no. They can't kidnap my daughter. And God must have had her prayer. Definitely, God had her prayer. Whether the mother or the father. Amen. Or the church, somebody was praying. You understand? So God rescued her. When people pray, and they don't give up, and they keep praying. Great things happen. Prayer is something people of God should return to. People of God today pray too little. They pray too little. That's why we advise you to pray up to two hours per day. How many of you are doing it? How many of you? And I said that's a minimum. But that means you can make three hours per day. You can make four hours per day. It's not very difficult to pray four hours per day. It's not difficult. The Lord give us understanding. God has a lot of faithful men. That's what I'm saying. And God is faithful. Very, very faithful. There are some great testimonies of what God has done. It's very, very faithful. Very, very faithful. Remember, the, the man who was to be killed. And the mother said... No, my son will not die for the murder. He did not commit. Did you ever hear that kind of testimony? Where God arrested the criminal to go and give up himself. No, but God did it. Because somebody was praying. I tell you, dare to pray. What did I say? Dare to pray about your situation. Don't give it up. Don't say there is nothing that can be done. Men may say nothing can be done. God will never say so. Dare to pray. Dare to call on God. And he will surprise you with great surprises. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's begin to look at specific names. Ephesians. Or perhaps... Okay, I've mentioned, uh, I've mentioned Enoch, I've mentioned uh, Abraham, but all the same, let's begin to look at scriptures to see definite things. Let's start from Ephesians chapter 1, 
verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. The epistle is written to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Did you observe the language, the faithful in Christ Jesus? At that time, and in every generation, people who are faithful, determined to be one of them, if you become a living sacrifice, you will be faithful. Don't forget our subject is becoming a living sacrifice. When you truly have become a living sacrifice, you are bound to be faithful because at that level, your life is sold out to God. Your life is what? Sold out to God. You are bound to be faithful. You are bound to be faithful. Colossians 1 2. To the saints and the faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossus, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The same thing we see there. Another church. The faithful brethren. I like this one called Puss the Word in plural. The faithful brothers. The faithful brothers in Christ. Brethren is the plural of brother. Brethren is what? The plural of brother. So the faithful brethren in Christ. That means there were brethren or brothers who were faithful. And you can be one of them now in your time. What are you doing if you are not one of them? Why do you want to be a friend of people who are faithful? A lot of people want to be in Christ on their own terms. They do not really want to be faithful. There are people who keep grumbling that the teaching is too difficult, it's too hard, it's too deep. I remember sometimes some people who are no longer in this church, even while the sermon is still going on, or at the end of it, they'll be whispering to some people, it's too difficult. Can you do it? Who can do it? What are they trying to do? To discourage you? Or you don't know? Pardon? That might not be the real intention. It might be because he's disturbed. The person who said that, what I'm saying is the person who said that might not have meant anything bad. He might just have done that out of personal embarrassment. Are you understanding? Are you following? Uh, the person may not necessarily be a bad person. It might not even mean bad. Perhaps out of personal embarrassment. Ah, who can do this thing? This man is saying. You understand? Hey, so can you do it? This thing is too tough. But then, that is the group of the unfaithful. The group of what? Don't join that group. Look for those who are faithful in Christ Jesus and be among that company. Amen. Be among what? That company. Be among that company. Are you paying attention? Follow what I'm saying now. Leave the man of God from, uh, leave the man of God from Judah. You read that when you get home. Huh? Hallelujah. You can read all the story when you get home. Hallelujah. The faithful who are at Colossus, who are where? Faithful brethren. That means not more, not one, isn't it? Plural. So you today determined to be among the faithful people of God of your time. Amen. Say, I choose to be among the faithfuls of God in my time. I choose. To be among the faithful brethren in Christ Jesus in my time. Help me, God. Amen. The Lord help you in Jesus' name. Numbers 12, 7. Numbers 12, 7. My servant Moses is not so. 
who is faithful in all my house. I like that. God boast of David for being, uh, sorry, Moses for being faithful. My servant Moses is not so, he's not like the others. He sold out to me. God is looking for ministers that cannot be bought with money. Amen. A lot of ministers begin well. But along the line, the devil will send rich men to buy them with money. The devil always does that. Minister who want to be faithful will send rich men to give them plenty of money. Rich men who will not be ready to obey the Bible. And then, if he's seduced by that money, if we attempt to keep that man in his church, isn't it? Then he might compromise his teaching to suit what a man likes to do or hear. That's how ministries die. I like that man of God from Judah. He said, even though you give me half of your house, eh? to who? A king. King said, return, I'll give you the word. Is that if you give me half of your house, oh God, I'm not coming. Hallelujah. 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 If you give me half of your house, I'm not coming. I like that. In my secondary school say, uh, sorry, in my secondary school say in those days, boys will say he gave the king what? Huh? He gave the king his show? Huh? The king said, come, I'll give you plenty of my hair. Over. If you give me half of everything you have, I will not come with you. I won't come with a sinner king like you. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big shout. Not like some leaders, Christian leaders in Nigeria who are frequent friends of presidents. Have you? Always going to president's house. And never really speaking the truth the nation needs to hear. Hallelujah. We cannot testify to what they say to the president at Asorok because we are not there. Are you understanding? lest we become false witnesses. But then, the compromise can be or be seen in other areas. If a leader is in a public place, the press should be able to carry that. He said this in public. Have you? Uh -huh. We charge the leader of the nation. We don't want this. We don't want it. Let there be no corruption. Let this be dealt with. It is the will of God. We need to hear things like that from men of God when they visit the president. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moses was not like that. God said, my servant Moses, not so. He was faithful in all my house. Faithful in what? That's the testimony of God. My servant Moses is not so. Who is faithful in all my house? God called Moses faithful. Hallelujah. God called Moses faithful. Amen. Enoch was faithful long before Moses. And we know it was because the Bible says God took him. Genesis 5. The book of Genesis. The book of Genesis. Chapter 5. Are we there? Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Hallelujah. 
which was the son of uh, sorry that's all Enoch walked with God and he was not for what God took him step back verse 23 and all the days of Enoch were 365 years all the days of Enoch were what aha Enoch walked with God and he was not found for what happened to him God took him God took him God took him because he pleased God so much that God said I'm taking this one to heaven <laughs> hallelujah you go to Hebrews 11 5 you see Enoch there again Hebrews 11 verse 5 By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God before his translation he had the testimony that what? that he pleased God he had this testimony that he pleased God. Hallelujah. Had the testimony please God. Amen. That was the time people were living to the age of 700 years, 800, 900 and above. Amen. If you go by the age of that time, you will, have, you will say that Enoch died young. Well, he didn't die. He didn't die. Enoch was, Enoch was taken away young. But he left the earth anyhow. He did not die. Hallelujah. Adam died at the age of 930 years. Huh? Hallelujah. You remember? 930 years. Now if you go by that, a man who was taken away at 360 something, that we about tax something years. So what do you say? Huh? Out of the man who lived 969 years. Huh? Then the one who was taken away at the age of 365, that means, if you go by that rating, if you should this rating, we'll say at the, when he was in the 30 something, have you? God took him away. Say, why does God take a young man away? Enoch was taken away to heaven at the age of 365 years when men lived up to 969 years. So that will mean, when, if you go by today's rating, it will mean when he was about 30 something years, God did what? Took him away to heaven. But he didn't die anyhow. He didn't die. The, the book of Hebrews tells us because he pleased God, so he definitely was faithful. Enoch walked with God so much that when he was still a young man at the age of 365 years, <laughs> <laughs> when he was a young man at the age of 365 years, God took him to heaven. He was a young man because at that time people lived 969 years. So that's just about one third, isn't it? God took him to heaven in about 30s. Hallelujah. He loved God so much. He walked with God so well. He didn't die, don't forget. But God took him away. Hallelujah. You too can determine to be faithful today. What did I say? Determine to be among the faithfuls. Those who will be faithful to the living God. Amen. And that's for your good, for your advantage. Only those who are faithful will inherit the kingdom of God. Numbers 12, 7, I read again. My servant Moses is not so. Who is faithful in all 
my house who is faithful in all my house hallelujah for Samuel 3 verse 20 the young man Samuel was found to be faithful amen Young man Samuel was what? Was found to be faithful. First Samuel 320. And all Israel from Dan on, even unto Bathsheba knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. Now the word established. You won't find the word faithful there. But that word established in Hebrew also means faithful. On top of establish there, write faithful. Don't cancel it, just write it on top of it. Or just say equals faithful. So somewhere was found faithful. That was why God called him. Hallelujah. David was a faithful servant of the king in his time, of King Saul. 1 Samuel 22 verse 14. 1 Samuel 22 verse 14. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 22 verse 14. Then Ahimelech answered the king and said, And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David, which is the king's son-in-law, and God at thy bidding and is honorable in thine house. Though King Saul did not consider it so, that was the time he was after the life of David. But that priest understood that David was faithful to the king. He was a faithful servant of the king. Whoever you are working for, be faithful. You are an assistant to a king, be faithful. Don't be disloyal. Don't be a double dealer. You are a managing director of a company. Be faithful to the company. You are in charge of their store. Be faithful. Be very faithful. You are the accountant. Be faithful. You are a teacher in charge of a school. Be faithful. Don't be disloyal. Don't cheat them. Because God is watching you. You are an engineer in charge of a project. Be faithful. What should not be approved? Don't approve it. Don't let people bribe you to say it is okay when you know it is not okay. Be faithful. Amen. Buildings continue to collapse in Lagos states because unfaithfulness is in many places or various places. A building should not collapse if the engineer in charge is faithful. If everything has been faithfully done, who approved the building? Who was the engineer that designed it? Who supervised it and said everything is okay? If you go and look at the paper of all this collapse building, everything you see is okay, okay, okay. And why are they collapsing? Because men who are engineers, who are supposed to say, no, it's not okay. Demolish it and start again. Once they are given money, they will sign and say it's okay. As a brother, is uh, an engineer, but he's a lecturer also at the Baden Polytechnic. I thank God for people like that. I was told they are always scared of him. He is coming to sight. He inspects projects for government and the testimony I had about him is I, I love it because I was told anywhere it's coming there are rambles because you will not be able to bribe him if you check what you are you are you know even if you have made a building like this take this housing now if engineers come in here civil engineers there are equipment they can use to determine the strength of the structures amen 
They can know how much cement you use. They, they will test it. They vibrate. They do by vibration, by other means. So if the strength is not enough, they will give another. Demolish. And I love the testimony of that brother. I was told any time he's coming to say, everybody is shaking. Rambles. Ah, 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 because you won't bribe him. He will just say demolish. And he's gone before you start telling stories. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a structural engineer at the Baden Polytechnic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In whatever job you are, be faithful. You are an engineer, be faithful. You are a doctor, be faithful. As a doctor, don't keep a patient beyond the time. He should be kept. If you need to refer him, refer him. Amen. If you need to discharge him, discharge him. A lot of doctors refuse to discharge a patient because they still want to take money for bed. They are not giving him anything again. They say keep him there. But that's not fair. Hallelujah. And as a Christian doctor, you should not do that. Some faithfulness. The moment you see the patient is fit enough, let him go. Your money will come from God. Amen. Not from cheating people. Hallelujah. There was a time my, my mother was sick. Old woman was uh, about 82 years. She was in the hospital. And uh, many of you know her. Almost all of you, I should say. And uh, it was so much that we had almost lost hope. I said, where? We don't know. We don't know. Old people somehow, if you take care of them, they will live longer. And I found that out. I found that out. A lot of times you think, ah, it's going. Maybe if you treat, she won't go. She won't go. <laughs> and lo and behold, she came out of it. Everybody had lost hope. She was even telling people, uh, where is my passbook? Take this, this. Uh, let me give. She said, let me give you my passbook. I said, don't give me your passbook. She was trying to hand over. I said, no, don't give it to What do I want to do with it? Hallelujah. And she came out of it. But what I love in the hospital was they discharge her. I told the doctor, she's not well. The doctor said, she's well. I said, ah, this woman is not well. She can't walk. The doctor said, they have carried out all the tests. And what they discovered, they have treated to a satisfactory level. I said, but she can't walk. The doctor said, with time she will walk. And lo and behold, it's so. Now, if they wanted to cheat us, what would they have done? When I myself was saying she's not well. <laughs> they would have said, uh, we are thinking of your expenses. They will start lying, have you? Uh, we are just trying to save your money. They would, yes, yes, let, let it us in here. And money will be counting. The doctor said, she's well. Take her home. As she eats and walk, gradually she will be able to walk. When she was discharged, she couldn't walk. She couldn't walk to take steps and walk. How would you think? But they said by their test, those symptoms are gone. Then walking will come with time. And it did. They were faithful in their jobs. Are you understanding? If they wanted to cheat us, we would have been there another two weeks. Maybe you want her to walk, Abby? Uh, let her stay there. Hallelujah. Whatever job you are doing, please be faithful. Amen. Be faithful. Your wealth will not come from cheating people. Be faithful. Amen. And when you are faithful, God will reward you. Hallelujah. Somebody is selling clothes to you. You paid for five yards. And you discover he is measuring six yards. Tell him. I'm paying for five years. You have measured six years. Are you giving me a dash or a gift? Or you are making a mistake? Let him identify it. And he will tell you, oh, thank you, and cut it off. And if he wants to give you a gift, then you will know it's a gift. Don't keep silent. When people make mistakes, that will make them lose. Are you understanding? Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. If you are the seller of the cloth, 
you will not want to measure six yards. Instead, when the customer is paying for five yards, you won't like it, would you? And love your neighbor as yourself. If your neighbor is selling to you and is measuring six yards and you are paying five yards, tell him. Then you are faithful to your God and God will reward you. There are great rewards for faithfulness. As a teacher, be faithful. Don't leave the school and leave the students untaught. A lot of teachers will leave the school. They will go outside and be selling cement, selling other things. The students will stay at school, nobody to teach them. That's unfaithfulness. Particularly in government schools. Private schools will not permit that. But government schools, there is a lot of, there are a lot of laxities. Well, you as a Christian, be faithful on your own. Don't wait for anybody to come and put you in order. Allow the word of God to put you in order. Hallelujah. Nehemiah chapter 7. Let's see another example of faithfulness. Nehemiah chapter 7. Nehemiah chapter 7. Now, okay, verse 1, verses 1 to 3. Now it came to pass when the wall was built, and I had set up the doors, and the porters, and the singers, and the Levites were appointed, that I gave my brother Hanani and Ananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem, for he was a faithful man, and feared God above many. He was what? A faithful man. If you have a red Bible and a ruler, underline a faithful man. A faithful man. Hallelujah. Hanani. He was a faithful man. He feared God above many. And I said unto them, Let not the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun be hot. While they stand back, let them shut the doors and bar them and appoint watches of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, everyone in his watch, and everyone to be over against his house. The person that will be at the, that was a kind of border security situation. Are you following? Security at the borders. Now when the men in charge of security are faithful, everything will be in order. If our custom men are faithful, the things in the nation that should not uh, go out, they will not go out. What should not come in by law should not come in. Duties that should be paid will be paid. A lot of things are brought in without payment of duties. That's like taxation that government takes on what you buy or import. But because of unfaithful custom men, they just pass in like that. Now you as a Christian don't compromise with evil. You want to buy anything from another nation, do it the right way. Amen? You are importing a car or any property. Pay duties as you should. Amen? I mean, if you are buying it from a West African country like... Uh, Republic of Benin, you go to Cotonou to buy a car or whatever, bring it into the right way. It's not honorable for a Christian to pay people, go and buy me a car from Cotonou, Republic of Benin, and they have to bring in the car through the bush to avoid custom men. You as a Christian should not support that. Amen. To pass through the bush to avoid custom men. Duties should be paid. Don't be a smuggler. Don't be what? Don't be a smuggler. Don't smuggle things in. Don't bribe custom men. If you are bribing them, you are not faithful. I was going to Kotonu one day. And because people tell me, we go to Kotonu, go to Kotonu. So if I go, I wanted to buy French books. I wasn't going to do business. You know, 
to improve my learning of French. I said I was going there to buy French books. I got to the border. A man said, Where are you going, sir? I said, I'm going to Cotonou. What are you? I'm going to buy books. He said, Where is your passport? Ah, I said, I, I have no, I didn't bring my passport. He said, You cannot go. Ah. And I said, Please, sir, the book we are using for the work of God. I'm not a businessman. Let me just go and buy and come. And the man said, Then bring, uh, find some, give us money. Ah, I said, That will be bribery. If you understand that, I'm not lying, and I'm, I'm going to buy books for the purpose of the gospel. I can go, but for me to give you money now, it will look like I'm bribing you. I, I told I explained to you, it's not that I don't have money, and the money you're asking for is not too much, but my conscience will disturb me. The man said, stand there. The apostle said, leave, leave the man, I not, not give money. And when I saw they insisted on money, I went back. I traveled all the way here, imagine. I was only to give them two naira, uh, sorry, two hundred naira, but I cannot. Uh, that means I wasted my transport money. I prefer to waste it than to give them two hundred naira. So I came back and I took my passport. 